So we are glad that we have uh, with us uh, today Mateusz pa Pajal, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> from, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, from the Brazilian Center for Research in Physics. So the title of the talk is already on the screen. You can see it's about Bohmian mechanics, chaos and the UNRWA effect. Uh, so it is in the line of uh, research that in the many last years, uh, Thanasis Bremos is following here okay. together with Professor Pontopoulos and our always good friend Christos Eftiniopoulos, who is now in Italy. And uh, well, so already we are astronomers. Uh, with the time we have uh, we've been used to listen to this kind of talks and we are very much interested in uh, what will follow. So Mateus, please start. Okay. First of all, I would like to thank you everyone for the invitation of for me this this amazing opportunity for sharing my recent works in the realm of Bohmian mechanics. And basically, my research uh, that I make during my PhD time in Brazilian Center for Research in Physics it's pointed for in two different fronts, both but both. Uh, in studying Bohmian mechanics. The first front, I study chaotic, I study chaotic system, in particular, uh, quantum chaotic systems using the, the Bohmian mechanic approach. And the second, the second front is, I, I use it to study the quantum field theory in curve space times. And uh, an application, uh, a particular application is the Unruh effect. So, I am going to try not to be very technical, so I am just saying the, the the big pictures of my my of my research and the basic idea that I want everyone to 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 have after this talk is that the the Bohmian mechanics, despite being an alternative interpretation of quantum mechanics, it's uh it's very very interesting and has numerous advantages, especially when we are dealing with chaotic systems, because usually when we treat chaotic systems, quantum chaotic systems, it's a, a very difficult, difficult test. But with Bohmian mechanics, we can extrude the chaotic quantum chaos in the same realm of the classical chaos. I mean, by the computation of the Lyapunov exponents. And as well, uh, it allows us to understand very good uh, in effects in, in quantum field theory, especially effects that dealing with in, entanglement uh, systems. So this is, the, this is the outline of my talk. It's going to be divided in two parts. The first part, I am going to talk about the broadly interpretation of quantum mechanics itself. And I am going to introduce the, the idea of how we can study chaos using the Bohmian interpretation. And the second part of my talk is the uh, properly about the quantum field theory in Google space time, where I'm going to say about the Bohmian approach of the Unruh effect. So at any time that you wanted to ask questions, you can interrupt me in, in, when I, I, I'm talking. I have no problem with that. So uh, before I, I start, I will give you some motivations of why we should use the or at least think in, in use the the Bohmian interpretation of quantum mechanics. The so when we are when we are performing uh, when we are performing measurements quantum measurements, we usually before the measurement we have the that the wave function. It's a superposition of all possible eigenstates of my quantum system. But after the measurement, the I the wave function becomes just one of the, the eigenstates. We say that the measurement process collapses the, the wave function. So, but this this idea of this collapse of the wave function, it's a little complicated when we are dealing with cosmology, for example, because the, the difference between the, the observer and the observable system is not very clear when we are, uh, when we are dealing with the, the whole universe. So the idea of having some 
collapse is not very good seen in, in cosmology. So we needed to use one alternative interpretation of quantum mechanics, and one of the interpretation that solves the measurement problem is just the, the, the Bohmian mechanics. So the Bohmian mechanics is trajectories based on the quantum theory with a very classical analog. And because this possibility of seeing quantum systems just like the classical system, it enables us to study compl very complex subjects like the quantum chaos itself. And as I said, there's has important applications in cosmology as the, as the Bohmian mechanics allow us to study the quantum to classical transitions in a more precise way than the usual interpretation of quantum mechanics. And the Bohmian mechanics just has the same, same results if we admit a, a quantum equilibrium hypothesis, it reproduces the same results of the usual quantum mechanical interpretation, the Copenhagen interpretation. So, uh, what is the, 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 the idea of the, the Bohmian mechanics? Basically, if I have my wave function and I write my wave function in the polar form, that is a uh, radial part times uh, exponential of uh, phase S, and I substitute this, this polar form into the Schrodinger equation and separate into real and real and imaginary parts, I gain two Two, two basic equations. The first equation is a continuity type equation, and the second equation is Hamilton Jacobi equation, where, where uh, appears here a uh, supplementary potential that has a quantum origin because it depends on the, the square of the Planck's constant. And we call this supplementary potential of quantum potential. So, in the limit, when the quantum potentials go to zero, we just recover the classical hamilton jacobi theory. So, but for we can fully understand the, the, the continuity equation, these two equations, as continuity equation and hamilton jacobi equations, we need to, to admit that the, this gradient of S that appears here, it's a, a momentum. So this, is, this here is called the guidance equation of, of my theory. So if I suppose th this equation here, uh, I can interpret this, this, this term, P squared over 2M, as a kinetical energy, in the sense that this hamilton jacobi equation can be seen as an energy equation. This derivative of the phase on, in relation to time, uh, better, the negative of the, the, this term here, it's just the total energy of my system, where each individual term here represents an individual energy contribution. So we have two classical contributions, a kinetical term and a, poten a classical potential term and a quantum potential energy contribution. So if I integrate this guidance equation, because this is a uh, species of velocity equation, so if I integrate this guidance equation, I can obtain my, the particles trajectories over time. That is, I obtain the quantum trajectories of my system. And this is so similar to the classical hamilton jacobi theory that if I can use the guidance equation and the hamilton jacobi equation in order to deduce a Newton's second law type equation. It's basically just a, a, Newton's, a Newton's equation with a nested force of quantum quantum source that's due to this gradient of the, the quantum potential. So again, when the quantum, quantum potential goes to zero, I recover the Newton's second law. So it's extremely analogous to the to the to, 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 to the, the classical way of us to see to, to understand the, the movement of the, of the particles. So it's a different manner to understand the quantum, quantum mechanics because it's a trajectory based theory where the wave function here now play two roles. We have a probabilistic role is as usual in the usual interpretation, but also because the velocity, because the gui guidance equation, the wave function also has a dynamical role since the velocity field is given in terms of the gradient of the phase of the wave function. So we also call the Bohmian mechanics of pilot wave interpretation 
because it's like as if the wave guides the 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 particles evolution and it's a very clear uh, quantum to classical transition achieved when the quantum potential goes to zero and so in my opinion it's a, a lot more clear manner to understand the quantum classical transitions than the usual manner of study quantum mechanics so this is a basic idea of of the the, the Bohmian mechanics so how we can obtain the, the the quantum trajectories basically the first step is to solve the schrodinger equation for a given initial wave function so from the the, the solution of the the wave function, with, which we can do analytically or numerically, but some systems don't do not process a uh, analytic solution. So once we obtain the wave function, we can obtain the the velocity field and perform the temporal integration of the guidance equation for a given set of initial positions. Generally. We do not have access because of the Heisenberg, the Heisenberg principle. We do not have access to the to this information. To, 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 we cannot measure precisely what is the initial position of my, my system. So I suppose a set of initial conditions that are distributed according to the square modules of the, the wave function. And we after we and then basically, it's, it's, it's these two steps over here. And we have an article where we obtain the, we show how to obtain the, 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 the quantum trajectories in a, in a full numerical manner. We obtain the numerical solution of the Schrodinger equation and the numerical, and, the, the quantum, and we obtain the quantum trajectories in a numerical manner too. So, in this work here, we consider some non-conservative systems, and here are some of the, the our our results. We obtain the the quantum trajectories, the the x in in function of time. This is a one-dimensional system, and the, the this this upper right figure here is the associated state space. This is basically the the if I'm not wrong, this is the Harmonic oscillator case, where we, are, where we consider our external force is equal to zero. But what is interesting is that the quantum trajectories is very different of the classical trajectories of a one-dimensional harmonic oscillator. Okay. However, when we perform the average of the, the this, all these trajectories here, we obtain a, a classical equation. The watch is basically the idea of the Erwin Fest theorem. So, but it's applied, we apply this, this idea to the to the quantum trajectories as well. Because in, in average, the we have this in, in, in average, like as we are considering a quadratic pot, classical potential, we have the we expect to in average obtain a classical solution. So we expect that. The average of the quantum trajectories to ob obey the, this classical law equation here. And also, we obtain a classical phase space. So, once we can say when we know how to compute this, this uh, as I said, this, this quantum trajectories, we are able to study the complex subjects like chaos. So, just for remembering for uh, the chaos at classical level has some important characteristics uh, such as presence of unpredictability, uh, some kind of a periodic behavior. We have a sensitivity to initial conditions marked by a nonlinear dynamics. And we have the exponential deviation of the neighboring trajectories which is can be computed by the presence, can be observed by the presence of the positive Lyapunov exponents, for example. Here we have the, the Lyapunov exponents, the definition of the Lyapunov exponents, that basically measures the deviation of two main boring trajectories. The, the, here we consider the deviation in the, the phase space. So this is the, 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 the basic idea of classical chaos. But since we are talking about quantum trajectories, 
we are we simply can also uh, talk about the exponential deviation of quantum trajectories. We can measure the deviation of the negative boring trajectories and compute the gap node exponents as well. So the Bohmian mechanics allow us to study the quantum chaotic system in the same realm of the, the classical chaos. So it's a very good advantage of Bohmian mechanics. A lot of critics of Bohmian mechanics that comes from the user interpretation is that in general, it not brings something new to the quantum theory. And it's a very complicated theory because the, we have to solve this complicated equation. The guidance equation generally is very complicated to solve. And it, it's not very easy. And they say that not bring something new. However, in the case of the, the, the class, in the case of the quantum chaos, it's, it's, it's a, a contra argument to, 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 this, to this critic because it allows us to study chaos, quantum chaos, in a more, 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 more easily way than the usual mind to study quantum chaos. So it's a big advantage of, of the Bohmian mechanics. And as the Bohmian mechanics reproduce all the results of the classical, of, of the usual quantum mechanics, the Copenhagen interpretation, we can just use the Bohmian mechanics to study chaos in a simple manner. So, uh, inspired by those ideas and actually by some works of uh, Professor Jemus and Professor Contopoulos and some other people uh, in the faculty of Athens, we start to think in a particular system that could, could uh, present the, this these quantum chaotic features. That's basically we consider here a quantum anharmonic membrane. That's basically a, an a bidimensional anharmonic oscillator featuring cubic and quartic interactions and some kind of uh, some kind of, of coupling term as well. And this coupling term here is extremely important in Mm, it's extremely important for the, 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 the how you can say, for, it's extremely important for, to, to, to bring the chaoticity for our system. In, in the beginning, we think that this cubic and quartic interactions here that are going to be the, the responsible for chaos. But as we, we, we study this, this uh, a little better, we understand that actually it's this this coupling term who brings the chaos for our system. So, as I said, the first step of obtaining the, 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 the quantum trajectory is to solve the Schrodinger equation. So for our system, we have this Schrodinger equation here, which is a very, very complicated equation. We no, do not have an analytical solution of this equation. So we have developed a completely numerical method to solve the Schrodinger equation here. Basically, we did this using the finite element, finite element methods. There's a library in, in mathematica with the, this, this method already implemented, where the basic idea is to, is to discretize uh, our, our, our x, y space in, uh, in square mesh grid and transform this, this PDA here in a system of ODS, ODS. That is a lot easier to... Yes? yes? Someone has a question? No, 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 no. Please mute uh, all your microphones. So, Mase Parakalu, can you mute to him? Uh... Excuse me, Mateus, we have a technical problem. Somebody came in and has not muted the microphone.
Tocan, tocan. Tocan. Ok. Mateus, can you hear me? Mateus, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can okay, hear you. Excuse us. All, all right. So we developed this numerical procedure to solve the, the, the Schrodinger equation. And we took as an initial condition just a superposition of harmonic oscillator eigenstates. Basically, we, we took this psi 0, 0, psi 0, 1, psi 1, 0, and sorry, psi 1, 1. The, we took this combination of, of, of eigenstate of harmonic oscillation as initial condition for this quantum harmonic membrane system. And a uh, important thing, uh, thing to note here is that both the our Hamiltonian and also our initial condition shares the same symmetry under the change of the x and y variables. So, so the 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 y is equal to x axis. It's a symmetric axis of our theory in such a manner that if I reflected the the, the my, my my system under the y is equal to x line, I I need to have the the same the same basically the the same the same results. So we expected in some sense in our in the performation of the bomb computation of the bomb mechanics to obtain this the the this this, this, sim, this symmetry here. So we simulate the system for different values of the coupling constant kappa. And once you obtain the wave function, we compute the velocity field of our system. Here is the, 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 the plot of the velocity field. And we observe that the appearance and collision of vortices are something quite recurrent in our, in the, in our system, the velocity field of our system. So a greater, uh, a greater coupling constant kappa implicates a greater number of vortices. And basically, it's these vortices who are the responsible for provocating the deviation of the neighboring trajectories, of the, the, the very close trajectories, initial close trajectories. And also, the, the creation and annihilation of these vortices also always occur in pairs because of the, the, the symmetry axis here. So here in, in the middle, we observe the formation of a pair of vortices. And as the system uh, evolves, these two vortices here tend to depart from each other. At the same time, coming from the, the left part and from the inferior, inferior part of this figure here, we have two other vortices who approximate of each other, eventually collide uh, over the, the, the symmetric axis here and consequently disappear. So it's a, a very interesting dynamic that we observe here. And once we have these velocity fields, we integrate these velocity fields numerically and obtain the, the, the quantum trajectories. Here we, we consider symmetric initial conditions and we observe that in, indeed the, the, the symmetry of our, of our system is is reproduced also in, within the, the performation of the quantum trajectories. And an interesting question here is, as we decrease in the value of the, 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 con the coupling constant, the, our system tends to become more and more ordered until that when we, we turn off the, the coupling, we obtain a very ordered system or something very, very interesting the sensibility to this parameter kappa here. We also verify that the system indeed possess sensitivity to initial conditions, uh, as we consider three initial conditions here, very close to each other. And as time starts to, uh, our, the, the time evolves, this very close initial conditions start to depart from each other and we obtain a very different results at the end. So, our system indeed possess sensitivity to initial conditions. This computation here is, was made for kappa is equal to one. And as the, I can say the cherry over the cake is the computation of the Lyapunov numbers. Basically the Lyapunov numbers are the average value of the 
the app of exponents computed in different places of our system. So in total, we consider uh, 60 initial conditions, 60 pair of initial conditions, and we compute the Lyapunov exponents and perform the average. And as we can see here, the, in, the curves in black, blue, and red, they have an increasing tendency, what indicates the presence of a positive Lyapunov number, which well, as we can say, is an indication of chaotic behavior. We also simulated our system for different values of the, the, the Planck's constant. And we our initial idea is that we are going to observe some difference between the, the simulation or the, the simulations of different values of the, the Planck's constants. However, for our, our surprise, we obtain, in general, uh, the same behavior, indicating that the system is also chaotic for different values of the this Planck's constant. So this is the basic idea of our this this first part. As perspectives of future investigations, we intend to study the system outside the quantum equilibrium hypothesis to see if we have different results, different possibilities of the user interpretation. We also wanted to analyze the precise limit between quantum and classical chaos within the Bohmian perspective. And also we, we wanted to investigate if the Bohmian mechanics is, the Bohmian approach is indeed equivalent to the other usual manner to address quantum chaos. We wish to study quantum chaos of uh, uh, some, some maybe more simple system in a, without using the booming mechanics. And we wanted to see this, is that the computation of the Lyapunov exponents implicates in, in booming mechanics, implicates in some property of the other usual minus tricks to the quantum chaos. So those, those are the basic ideas of, uh, of my first part here. So, I, I am going to open, uh, before I start the part two, part two actually is more and more quickly to speak, but I am going to open here if you, someone has some questions to, to make about this part one. Afterwards. Uh, no, after, 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 after we will have the questions, so Mateus continue. Okay, okay. So, uh, there's any question? No, 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 no. Uh, we will have questions at the end of the talk. So for both parts of the of your talk. So please okay, continue. okay, okay. So as in part two, uh, I'm gonna talk about the the Bohmian approach of the Unruh effect. So the basic idea of the Unruh effect is that uh, ma, if uh, is that the idea that uh, uh, how I can say uh. Uniform, uniformly accelerate observer will see uh, a different vacuum state of the inertial observer in Minkowski space. So if I have the different set of, of different set of inertial observers and compare the vacuum of each of different each inertial observer, they are all going to see the same vacuum state. However, if uh, if I have a uniformly accelerated observer in relation to the inertial observer in Minkowski space, the uh, accelerated observer, the vacuum state, which what represents the vacuum state for the for the inertial observer, do not represent a vacuum stage a vacuum stage for the accelerated observer, in the sense that the Accelerate observer will see a thermal bet of a, of a, of a va vacuum particles of the inertial observer, and this thermal bet you have the, the, the temperature which is proportional to the acceleration of the of the the accelerate observer. So it's, this is the basic idea of the Unruh effect, and we want to approach this this effect with the help of the Bohmian mechanics. So if we consider a real massless scalar field in two-dimensional Minkowski space, 
and we with this action here, we can ext extremize the action and consequently obtain the equations of motion that just are the klein gordon equations. So I can expand my field phi in terms of the positive and negative solutions of the klein gordon equations, where the coefficients that appears in, the, in this expansion are interpreted as the usual creation and annihilation operators from which we can define the Minkowski vacuum, that which, as I said, is equivalent for all the inertial observers. So if I, I'm, I'm going to describe the, 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 the accelerate observers by the Hindler coordinates, which are represented by tau, the, variable, the time variable tau, and the spatial variable psi, and the relation with the usual act, the usual time and the, and the spatial variables with the Minkowski space is given by this Hindler transformations here, which are the this the, occurs in this first part here of the of the in, in representing this right wedge here. So once that the Hindler and Minkowski geometries are linked by a conformal transformation, we have the same uh, the same Klein Gordon equation, the same equations of motion for both geometries. However, I have for Hindler geometry a, a Klein Gordon equation with uh, with Hindler variables instead of the usual Minkowski variables. So once I have this positive frequency mode and negative frequency mode in terms of these Hindler variables, we do not have the same field expansion of the, the usual Minkowski space. So the, and the creation and annihilation operators that we use to define particles are different from the, the, the Minkowski case. In the sense, the vacuum of the Hindler the Hindler co for the Hindler coordinates are different of the vacuum for the Minkowski coordinates. And indeed, if we calculate the average value of the number operator defined in, in, Hindler, in, Hindler, in Hindler coordinates, and we average this, this, this number operator here in a Minkowski vacuum, we will not obtain zero, but as I said, we are going to obtain a Bose-Einstein condensate with temperature that is proportional to the acceleration, right? So the basic idea of Bohmian mechanics, as I, I show in the part one, is to work with the wave function. So we need to use some kind of wave functional approach to the, this, this, the, to the quantum field theory. So it is basically what we made here in, in, in this work that we published in Physical Review D. Basically, we obtain the vacuum wave function of the of the, the Minkowski vacuum in Hindler coordinates. And when, once we obtain this vacuum wave function, we obtain the field trajectories. And as we are working with uh, the quantum field theory, the observable quantities are average. So we need to perform the Bohmian average in order to compare with the usual uh, results. So it's, it's basically, this is what we made here. Instead of work with the action, as, as we wanted to obtain this wave functional approach, we, wanted, we needed to, to work with our, the Hamiltonian of our system and solve this kind of functional Schrodinger equation here, where the wave function is given by the projection of some state in the, in the field basis here. So assuming uh, uh, the composition of the wave function as a product of different psi k's for a case uh, greater than zero, we can show that each psi case will satisfy an independent Schrodinger equation, which we can solve it the solution we have an analytical solution despite the difficulty of quantum field theory we have a precise analytical solution of this functional Schrodinger equation here that is given in terms of these coefficients f and omega here which are expressed just like the, the which have these expressions here so once i have this 
wave this is basically is the wave function of the Minkowski of the Minkowski vacuum in Hindler coordinates. And as I have this wave function functional here, I can compute the I can pass to the Bohmian approach. So I can write the, the wave function, the polar form in the radial part and the phase I give in terms of the real and imaginary part of the coefficients f and omega that I just showed in the, in the previous slide. And just as in the first part, if I insert my wave function, my wave function into the Schrodinger equation, the functional Schrodinger equation, I get two real equations. One equation is interpreted as a hamilton jacobi like equation with this extra quantum potential here. And the second equation is interpreted as a, as a continuity equation from where I can obtain the guidance equations. That's the basic idea of the guidance equation in the previous part. In the previous part, I have the, the momentum of my particles are, are, going, are just the gradient of the, the phase. So here, the derivative in order to, to phi k here is just uh, place the whole of the gradient and this, the derivative of phi in order to tau, it's just the canonical conjugate, the momentum of the of the, my, my field phi, my field mode phi kappa. So I have this guidance equations here. I am going to solve that later, but which is really good in the, the Bohmian approach is that it enables the, 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 the possibility of separate the total energy of my system in the hamilton jacob equation into quantum and classical contributions, as I mentioned before. So the total energy is given by this expression, and I have the quantum, the, the classical contributions of the, this total energy are the kinetical, sorry, are the kinetical energy and the classical potential energy. And the quantum part is the given in terms of the quantum potential. So when I compute the mean values of the each one of these quantities over here, they have in principle very complicated expressions, but when I sum off all of them, I obtain the average value of my total energy of my system, which is just equivalent to the total energy of a bose einstein condensate. Here is the bose einstein distribution that appears in computation of this Bohmian average. And we obtain here the inverse of our, the, our temperature, of the Unruh temperature. That's just equal to the acceleration over two pi. Indeed, if I compute the numeric, the average, the Bohmian average of the, the, the number operator, I will obtain directly this Bose ice, just this Bose ice condensate over here. So we can reproduce the same results of the of the the usual unru approach, the usual the usual unru the, the same results as the unru effect using the alternative approach of the the Bohmian mechanics, the Bohmian quantum field theory. But it's interesting to notice the 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 low and high temperature regimes, since the temperature is proportional to the acceleration, the low temperature regimes implicates a very low acceleration. So if the acceleration is approximately zero, I do not have an accelerated observer. I can approximate my accelerated observer by an initial, initial observer. And I reproduce the same results of here of the of the, the Bohmian mechanics for an inertial observer in Minkowski space. So this is a very good consistent, consistent test that we look at and we obtain the same results of the, the, of the inertial observer in Minkowski space. However, more interesting is to analyze the high temperature regime. It's basically we have two, two, two results here. In among almost all, in almost over almost all the time, we have that the average of the quantum potential is approximately going to be zero, and the energy distributes into just into the, the this classical parts here. However, for those specific moments of time here, 
you know, of the hinder where this hinder time tau is equal to n pi over kappa with n an integer, we have that for those specific moments, the quantum potential is approximately given by, given, given by this expression and the, the classical contributions are completely going to be zero. So we have a significant shift in the surroundings of these time, periods of time here to the classical from quantum dominance in the, the energy. So we think this is a new result that it's not possible to obtain in the user interpretation because in the user interpretation, we are not able to separate the classical and quantum contributions. So it, it shows us that in some specific moments of the hinder time, we have this the dominance of this quantum effect. So perhaps it could reveal some new some new new experimental results that we are not able to, to not able to understand without the, the Bohm interpretation. So it's a here I plot the graph. Uh, the, this green line here is just the sum of the classical contributions, while the red line is the the average of the quantum potential. So you, you can see here that in almost all the time we have a classical dominance here. But for this, those specific moments, zero, pi, two pi, three, three pi, etc., we have a fastly decreasing in the classical contribution and a very quickly uh, increasing of the, the quantum effects on, on the, the energy, the, on the, the energy here. So perhaps this could present some, some I don't know, some, some experimental results involved in, here in, in these specific times. Ah, and uh, which is very, a very, very interesting thing that we observe here is that despite the complexity of the, the, the team né, that we are working with quantum field theory in curved space time, despite the, 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 the we, we, we are using the quantum field theory in curved space times, but we are able to obtain, to analytically solve the guidance equations. It has this just simple expression here. So basically, I obtained this field, this field expression here. And when I compute the energy of my system, of each trajectory have this specific energy here. It's a very complicated expression. But if I consider this integration constant in D that appears here as a, just as a phase, I can show that my energy of those specific trajectories are exactly the average energy of our system. And also the, the individual parts of the energy are just equal to the, to, to, to the, average, uh, to the average energy here of the, the, the corresponding parts. So we have, we never observed the, this, such properties in any system in the literature either on in quantum field theory or in just simple quantum system as well. We never observe a single trajectory that has the property of simulates the average of the, the whole bun, uh, whole set of, uh, of trajectories. So we are thinking that maybe we don't, we don't know yet if this is a particular property of this particular system, or this also can be observed in other systems as well. Because if, the, if this that we observe here is something in general, it's a very good notice for, for it's a very good news for the Bohmian mechanics, because we are going to be able to simulate very complex quantum system with just one single trajectory. I mean, we can simulate the average of the, the very complex systems containing a lot of, of components, a lot of different uh, particles with just one single trajectory. And this, if this is true, it's going to be an amazing result of Bohmian mechanics. So this is something that we, we really wanted to, 
to a study in, in, in the future. So just for concluding here, uh, I um, yeah, just to recapitulate from some of the results of the second part, we calculate the functional associated Minkov, the functional, the wave functional associated with the Minkowski vacuum in hindered variables, where we identify the hamilton jacobi continuity equations. We recover the Bohmian mechanics in Minkowski in space for low temperatures, while for high temperatures, we derive the I do not say, but we derive the partition theorem for high temperatures, which is a, a very good thing, a very good consistency test now, too. And we obtain uh, the bose eisen distribution with Unruh um temperature when we compute the Bohmian average. And once the, the, the Bohmian approach allows the separation of the total energy into classical and quantum parts, we could observe that the that we could observe in a periodic interchange of the between quantum and classical contributions with some transitions. Here there are a fault of two here, but the, 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 actually it's just okay. This is this two here do not do not, uh, do not exist. We obtain the sudden transitions uh, at this specific moment of time uh, for high temperature limits. That is, we observe this quantum to classical dominance transition. And we found very, very peculiar Bohmian field configurations with amazing pro the amazing property that the individual energy be exactly equal to the mean energy of our system. So as a perspective, we wanted to investigate analog models of the Unru effect to see if this quantum to classical transit, quantum to classical dominance over this period, this specific moments of time here uh, are something that can be measured in, in laboratory. We want also to consider configurations with initial distributions that not obey the born rules. And uh, as a final perspective, we wanted to extend because of the similarity between the Hindler and, and the Schwarzschild geometries, we wanted to extend the Hawking radiation using the same approach of the the Bohmian mechanics to see if the Bohmian mechanics can shed some light on the information paradox problem, for example. So it's basically this that I wanted to present today. Once again, I want to say thank you everyone for the opportunity for sharing the, these, these works. I'm very happy with the, the, the invitation. So thank you to everyone and I'm open to questions now. Thank you very much for a nice talk. Uh, we are here so to receive uh, questions and Sanas wants to ask something. Mateus, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Well done for the talk. Okay, thank you very much for uh, following our invitation, accepting our invitation. Um, <clears throat> I, as far as you know, I'm working in, in Bohmian quantum mechanics and I know some things about the first part of the talk. I'm not a field theorist, okay? So can you uh, go back to your um, slides? The, the, uh, no, 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 uh, next one? Next one? Ah, okay, the, the previous one. Where is the Hamiltonian? <clears throat> yeah. I just want to make a short uh, comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Bohmian quantum mechanics, Actually, what we study is um, we want to try to study the relation between classical house and quantum house. Okay, and Bohmian mechanics has a um, has a benefit. Okay, it has a privilege of uh, a clear definition of trajectories according to the the same definition of classical trajectories. Okay, but again, I think that it is not uh, very clear if we can say that Bohmian quantum mechanics uh, produces the same house as the classical mechanics. Why that? Uh, as you know from our works in the field, even if we do not have correlation terms in the Hamiltonian, okay? Uh, okay, okay. We, we, we may have, we can take the simple <coughs> harmonic oscillator. This, without any correlation between X and uh, Psi. If we start with an entangled state as the one that you use uh, in your paper, we will find how. 
we find house. We find we find vortices. We find the 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 X points, which are the scatters of the incoming trajectories. Okay, so I would like to make a, a proposal to study this system in an initial product state. This system in in initial product state will make an entanglement as it evolves in its evol during its evolution because you have the the kappa x psi term. Okay, so you can start without an entangled state. Otherwise, we can drop out all the, the, the interacting term and start with an entangled state. Then again, you will find house. Okay, okay. okay. And something else, uh, the more the symmetry of the system, okay, then the, the closer to integrability. Because here you can interchange X and Psi without uh, having a clear effect, okay? I, yes, would, yes. I would kindly ask you to do such a calculation by breaking the symmetry. Okay. Frozen. Oh, it's a, okay. I think it, uh, it would be very interesting to see a system which is not, um, which, which does not possess such a symmetry to be a close to a random system. Okay, so this is a, a first idea because in the next slide, can, can you change to the next slide? Yeah, yeah. Uh, next slide. Uh, I think the greater the coupling constant, the greater the number of nodes. Okay? Yes, so, yes, yes. So you see that because you expect to see house due to the coupling constant. But actually, I think, I think, may, I may, maybe I'm wrong. I think that uh, a very big of picture of house is not seen here due to this symmetry. Do not take the coupling term, break the symmetry, and start with an entangled state. Again, we'll, you will find nodes and X points and all these kind of things. Okay, so I think that such a parameterization would be very useful for in order to extract more and more and more and more general results because this is a very big one Hamiltonian. It is it is a rich Hamiltonian. So mm -hmm. break the yeah, symmetries, yeah. change the parameters, change the, the the interaction term by change the symmetry there. It's x y make it x y squared, and x y squared is a, a well a well studied uh, classical system. You can make you can make a very nice and very rich Poincaré surface of section and make uh, a straight comparison between the Bohmian results and the classical house. Okay, so nothing more from me. You, we can talk later if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like very much of the of the ideas. Indeed, it is a very interesting thing to to consider. Thank you so much. Okay, so other questions from from you. Uh, may I do a technical uh, one? If you go two, three, well, in the transparency, you have the Lyapunov exponents. It's, I think it's earlier than that. Here? No, 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 the, the, the later, diagrams. Later, 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 later. 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 Okay, okay. Okay, there, there, there. So, for instance, uh, I see the blue one has a period that it is already leveled off and then starts increasing. So, do we yeah, have... Yes. Yeah. So, are there two different chaotic regions or... Uh, it's an initial uh, phase of uh, initialization of uh, or, or why is that so? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we believe that this is because the <clears throat> here uh, actually it's be, uh, in grand, great parts because of the the number of nodes here. The what what happens is that for the this this blue one here, k plus equal to zero point five. Uh, in, in such moment, uh, we observe a great number of nodes mm -hmm. uh, in, in a period of time. But these nodes, for some 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 reason, they disappear, and the the the, the blue system start to present more nodes than the 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 more vortices than the. Or the red red system, so okay. it passes to present a, a more chaotic system than, than the, the, this one here, the, this red one here. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. 
Uh, if uh, there is something is, else, yeah, Professor please. Francis. So, so it's, uh, one excuse more me, question, excuse me, Mateus. Uh, 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 another comment. Please be very careful about the limit H bar go to zero. Okay, okay. It's the, no, 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 it's just a comment. Okay. This limit comes from the phase space formulation of quantum mechanics. Okay, it is not. It, it is a very, a very important uh, question in the field. If if we take the limit h bar go to zero, if we by taking this limit going to zero, we can make the transition from uh, from quantum to classical. Mm -hmm. But the limit does not is not well defined if you do not um, divide the h bar with uh, a quantity which is, has the same units in phase based uh, formulation of quantum mechanics you you always observe h bar over something and this has uh, um, um, dimensions of work times uh, time so the h bar go to zero is always unitless and this has always to be um, explained in every paper because this limit is not uh, always well defined. You can see many papers which find pathological situations where the limit h bar goes to zero produces uh, totally erroneous results. Okay, and something else which I leave for you, and <laughs> Rick. Please check the relation between entanglement. And the production of nodes, this will be something very, very uh, easy for you because you have all the, the, the numerical framework. Check the, 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 the relation between entanglement and production of house. This is actually what I always do with Professor Kotopoulos. But we need more and more uh, calculations and numerical evidence about this. And beware that entanglement is uh, a base basis independent quantity for the quantum system. It does not um, depend on the basis, the basis vectors that the um, wave function is going to be expanded. Why, while house has to do with the, with the differential equations. And by changing the basis of the wave function, you take another set of um, differential equations, which will not, in general, I think, if we find something, this will be a very, a very good uh, result in Pomia mechanics. If we find um, a close relation between house, a general relation, not a, a model independent relation between house and the production of entanglement, this will be something very uh, useful for the field of Pomia mechanics. Thank you again. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, Professor, for 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 the comments. Thank you. Okay. So. Thank you very much, Mateus. Thank you very much. Thank you very much again. And all the good uh, success for your uh, all the best endeavors and all your research. <laughs> okay, you can send me. I will send you the, 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 the link and we can talk later. Okay. Okay, okay, Professor. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Professor Talis. Bye. -bye. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will send it. Thank you.